Hi. Uh, good evening. Today we are uh, in another place, another part of Saligaon. This is a village where I, where I reside. Uh, in front of you, Saint Cajetan's Chapel. To my left, the Saligaon Institute. 92 years old. 92, 93. I have lost count. Probably 92. Probably 92. Okay. Uh, it looks. You wonder what it is. It looks like a mix between the dogs. The dogs. It looks like a mix between the between a chapel and a and a house, a big house. But actually, it's a club. It's a club built on the old Africa model. Uh, where people gather in the evenings to meet up to to play cards to read to read books uh, outside it has a very foreboding members only sign if i'm not mistaken it was set up during my dad's generation in the 60s when they were probably in their 40s uh, more recently there's this board which tells you, which gives you a list of all the members. I don't know if you can read it. Of all the life members of the Saliga Institute, present and some who are no longer with us, some who have passed, some who have passed and 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 are no longer with us, some who have migrated out of out of the village, out of the state, out of the country. Uh, this side is is a notice board which is not very active now. Okay, it's, uh, it's got one of these paintings done by a village artist, listing all the village names and the the pet names of the villagers in front of the village church. What's most interesting is this uh, history in stone. A listing of all the people who donated uh, money to keep the club going uh, in in the 70s probably when it was revived so the club was set up the Saliga Institute to go by its formal name was set up in the year 1928 this edifice was constructed by Antonio Jose de Souza Cordero and Vittorino Francisco de Saldana, 1928. Prominent uh, business families, businessmen of the village who made who made their money, I think, if not mistaken, in uh, East Africa primarily and Hyderabad, if I've not got it wrong. So here are the names of all the donors who donated 5,000 rupees. 500 rupees, 1000, 1001, 750 varying amounts. So I think a minimum of 500 got your name mentioned here. In those days, 500 was quite, quite a, quite a tidy sum. Then we go inside. Uh, but before that, uh, this is the office. This is the club office, which, uh, which is cluttered with a bit of furniture and things like that now it has seen uh, more busy times and uh, more active times when I was a school kid in the 70s late 70s mid to late 70s 75 76 to 79 we came here on a day-to-day -day basis and it was a lovely place fully active fully alive everyone uh, busy and the seniors playing cards at that end of the of the hall and uh, there were library shelves all over here which are no longer there okay the uh, this this side was constructed later so it was just symmetrical with two balconies on either side of the hall and uh, we would play carom Bookworms like me would read the magazines and things like that just to pay tribute to the founders who set it up again 
if I get it right, uh, the guys on the left and right of uh, uh, Salikankar's villagers in East Africa and the person in the center, probably Hyderabad. So, so yeah, today there's a collection of books, second-hand pre-loved books as we call them, which, uh, which is sold at a very reasonable price. So it's like a pseudo library where you can pick up books. My friend Orlando is just browsing, so because of him I'm here. Hi, Orlando. <laughs> a word or two. Browsing through the old books. Yeah, I'm not finding what I'm looking for. You're not finding what you're looking for. Have a look inside. There are some of the... Inside? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I must apologize. It's, it's the fault of me of people like me and myself that, uh, you know, the place is in such a state of disrepair because we are just coming back after the monsoons and after the pandemic. So, you know, it's, the books are very dusty and it's quite embarrassing to <laughs> invite anyone over in, at times like this and also to, <laughs> uh, to, you know, ask them to go through the books because they are very dusty and things like that. But nonetheless, the love of the written word. So this table is, is, is a wooden table carved wooden table. I remember it very fondly because uh, when I was a kid, I used to sit and read on this table. Yeah. Sit and read almost on a day-to-day -day basis, three to four hours a day minimum. And uh, if I'm such a nut today, it's probably because of tables like this. Thank you, table. <laughs> so, yeah, the books. So, so the model basically is that uh, we accept book donations from anyone and we try to sort it out. Uh, you would see it much more neater if you come in in uh, working times. And uh, then we sell it at very reasonable rates. Maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 rupees a book. A few of the books are, uh, are sold at 100 or 200 or something like that. But most of them would be, would be sold very inexpensively and uh, it acts like a the bakers, the bakers going outside. It acts like a pseudo library where you can take a few books, pay for them, read them, get them back, exchange them, no problem. So we don't have to keep records. Of course, the, these are the existing uh, library books of the club. Okay. Uh, all of them neatly stashed and things like that. Neatly stacked, sorry, not stashed, stacked. And... Uh, numbered and everything of that sort okay so yeah this is part of the story this is part of the story which might someday make sense let's hope it doesn't fall so so we had a children's library here which ran very successfully thanks to our lady volunteers who ran it for a long time maybe three or four or more years so it so happened that Frank Simois as part of his roots in Saligaon. So his widow, the late Gita Simoyes, was passing through the village and one day she she messaged me and she says, like, you know, I want to do something in Frank's name, what should I do? So I said, like, why not start a library because, you know, given my own interest. So actually Gita Simoyes uh, funded, you know, Orland funded uh, this children's library here which ran for about three to four years. Ran quite successfully, all with uh, women volunteers coming once a week. How do you stop? Uh, you know what happens, the children grew up probably and then uh, you're you reaching know, out. The children to yeah, but you're reaching out to a closed circuit, no? Like, uh, you know, it's when you have children of that age that you take a bigger interest and then your children outgrow it and, you know, I think after some point to sustain, to sustain volunteerism is a bit is a bit tough. I have not been able to find out the history of the club actually. But people seem to suggest that after it started in the 20s, it went through phases of ups and downs. So, 60s, yeah, it's normal. It's normal. 60s was once one such revival when all these Africanders and Bombay Goans and everyone came back, you know, came back. 60s, 70s, it has been active. Then in the 90s, we saw a lull. We saw a lull in the 90s and... Uh, People were moving out then again, so there has been a lull and a couple of years back, like they, we were finding it tough to find someone to take over. 
So the suggestion came up that why don't you close the club and uh, we almost did that. But thankfully some, some guys actually agreed to take over and it saw quite a revival in the sense that we went through a market which was a village market which was made in Saligaon village market which was held here on Tuesdays uh, with the initiative of people like Clarice and uh, her team Akila and all that so it was held just outside here and on the side and uh, yeah that, that was quite good it, it ran very well it ran well and uh, brought in a whole lot of new people both as vendors Hi. both as vendors and as buyers so uh, then the pandemic came along the way so that had to be stopped that had to be stopped and uh, things like that we also had a big mando mando group going which had uh, two or three or four good events here we saw a big revival of the mando okay now this painting on the wall we were hoping it would be F.N. Souza, but it is uh, Anthony DiMello, no less. So Anthony DiMello is a son of the village who was uh, Karachi Goan. This is painted by Solomon Souza, grandson of F.N. Souza. And uh, he was a sports administrator credited with setting up the Brabant Stadium and a whole lot of other things. So this uh, this is was the badminton court built in the 1970s by the late Sunny Lobo one of the villages uh, engineers returned from Myanmar ok uh, the sign on the institutes it has a dollar like sign there on the on the walls it's actually SI Saligao Institute so my theory is that the Saligao Institute was built exactly on the pattern of the uh, on the pattern of the Goan institutes in East Africa so after your busy day at work they had an early day there ending at 4 if I'm not mistaken you could come and uh, chill out at the institute and play cards so uh, meet up with your with your colleagues and it's a kind of a boys club kind of thing if you want to call it that though of course uh, it's it's also uh, women are welcome to have their own activities and uh, it's probably much less gender based now than it was in the past so the market and the mando were huge kind of you know saw a lot of women participation and things like that women leadership if you want to say that and uh, yeah that's it so the place is overgrown after the monsoons need a clean, needs a clean up there is a terrace at that side which is a great place in my view for you know moonlight sing songs or whatever and uh, there is a bar there during the during the sessions you can open up the bar and there also used to be a lot of weddings held here once upon a time so it was like a big meeting center with that we'll end this virtual tour tour thanks so much thank you